What's up everybody and welcome back to another installment of Tom Talks and today I'm going to be talking about the Game Awards and predicting who I think will walk away victorious at this year's awards. So for those of you that don't know, the Game Awards is an annual celebratory event that takes place at the end of the year. Uh, this year's is taking place on December 1st in California, but the aim of the event is to kind of recognize the best games that released this year as of the 26th of November, I think. I think that's the cutoff point, so anything before that uh, in 2016 is eligible, uh, but stuff after that, so this year you've got things like Final Fantasy 15 and The Last Guardian will not be counted and will probably, you know, be in the running uh, next year, no doubt. But the aim is to kind of recognize the best games that released this year. Um, there's also some categories for the kind of the best studios, gaming personalities, and a bunch of esports stuff as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through each categories, uh, each of the categories that I have here on the kind of my screen to the right or your left I guess I think uh, and I'm basically gonna run through and kind of predict uh, who I think is gonna walk away victorious but uh, I'm gonna immediately rule out before we start uh, the categories of best esports game uh, best esports team and best esports player and probably as well best strategy game and best sport stroke racing game. I guess I could do best sport stroke racing game, but I have no knowledge of those categories at all. So I'd be basically stabbing in the dark uh, and kind of plucking a name out of a hat. So, you know, on that basis, I'm not gonna talk about those categories because I have absolutely no idea. Uh, probably who any of the people are, any of the teams, any of the games are in those categories, uh, so we're gonna leave that one. So the first category we're gonna jump into is most anticipated game, uh, which is, you know, kind of ironic really when, you know, this is the Game Awards 2016, but there is a category for, you know, people's most anticipated game, and the nominees are God of War from uh, Sony Santa Monica and Sony Interactive Entertainment. We have Horizon Zero Dawn next from Guerrilla Games. We have Mass Effect Andromeda, a Red Dead Redemption 2, and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild from Nintendo. So, um, I mean, four out of the five games here uh, I am looking forward to incredibly. God of War, uh, we saw uh, kind of get revealed at this year's E3. Looks absolutely stunning. I really kind of appreciate and like the direction they're taking the franchise. You know, it's a kind of third person, uh, over the shoulder action adventure kind of game. Very much, I think it looks very similar to the likes of the uh, rebooted Tomb Raider games in the sense that it's not really open world, but you're kind of uh, being funneled down this linear path, but there are kind of, uh, you know, expansive environments and stuff for you to discover. I mean, you know, really taking the franchise in a new direction. Um, you know, you play as Kratos, but you, you you have your son alongside you. So it's, you know, they seem to be, um, you know, packing the story with a lot more emotional weight and really kind of fleshing out and developing Kratos' character beyond this angry uh, dude who wants to kill gods and stuff. <laughs> um, so that looks great. Horizon Zero Dawn from Guerrilla Games, again, is another kind of um, uh, an interesting uh, kind of direction in the sense that Guerrilla Games, you know, have been known uh, to make, you know, Killzone. So, you know, to come out a few years ago at E3 and show off this brand new IP, uh, which is basically this kind of post-post apocalypse in the sense that robots have kind of, uh, not necessarily taken over the world, but they've become the kind of the dominant species, if you will. Humans are kind of now lower down on the food chain. Uh, the world has kind of been overrun and consumed by nature again. Uh, so it's kind of this mixture of two different styles. You know, you've got this kind of almost pre, uh, you know, prehistoric, um, kind of aesthetic in the sense that you know there's cavemen and cave women and you know nature and all stuff like that but you know that's kind of fused with you know sci-fi and future and technology so it's a nice kind of amalgamation of two different styles uh, third person action game looks great uh, looking forward to that one mass effect um, looks great and then the legend of zelda breath of the wild couldn't really care about to be honest with you i know on popular opinion but there you go but the one I'm most looking forward to is Red Dead Redemption 2. Absolutely adored the first Red Dead. Uh, probably, you know, up there in terms of my top five games of all time. 
loved it so of course i'm going to be on board and super excited for red dead redemption 2 so that is that one done uh, in terms of what i think will win um I want to say, uh, probably Red Dead will win actually, either Red Dead or, uh, or or Zelda, because Zelda, you know, has been talked about what seems like forever now. Um, so there's another category here for best fan creation, but, uh, you know, have, I can't say I've really seen any of the, the, the things there, so we're going to skip past that one as well. There's another category presented by Intel, Trending Gamer, for a streamer, influencer, media member who has made an important impa impact on the industry in 2016 so i'll read through the nominees here you've got, got angry joe you've got boogie you've got danny o'dwyer jacksepticeye and lyric i've heard of jacksepticeye i've heard of boogie and i've heard of angry joe and danny o'dwyer i haven't heard of lyric um but who i would vote for is danny o'dwyer i think the stuff he's doing over at noclip since he left GameSpot is fantastic that's kind of the game the games coverage i want to see uh, rise to the top he's basically doing um Kind of document documentary shorts that aren't you know paid for by developers aren't funded by advertisers it's funded by you guys or you know the gamers the community uh, over on patreon uh, and he basically goes around and kind of tells the stories of these different games uh, and you know and these and, and the studios that make them uh, really really cool i recommend you go and check out his stuff uh, over on youtube and support him on patreon if you can that's who i would vote for but in terms of who i think will win to be honest with you i mean Danny O'Dwyer might walk away with it, but you've got some big names here like Angry Joe, Boogie, and uh, Jacksepticeye. So, uh, you know, I think Jack Jacksepticeye might walk away with it. You know, he's huge, uh, but I'd really like to see uh, Danny walk away with it. Um, I think he thoroughly deserves it. Um, so next up, we're going to skip past all these esports uh, stuff. We have Best Multiplayer Game. The nominees, you have Battlefield 1 from DICE and EA, Gears of War 4 from The Coalition and Microsoft, Overcooked by Ghost Town Games and Team 17, Overwatch uh, from Blizzard Entertainment, Rainbow Six Siege from Ubisoft Montreal, and Titanfall 2 from Respawn and EA. Really solid list um, uh, of shooters. Um, you know, I think 2016 uh, has really been a strong year for shooters. Uh, I haven't really played any of them bar Doom, um, which isn't on this list because it, you know, isn't really. It's got a multiplayer component, but that's not the reason you play you play Doom. You play it for the awesome single player. And it gets a nod, you know, later on in a few different categories. But, you know, really strong year for shooters. And I'm really um, glad to see a game like Overcooked on there. I haven't played Overcooked, um, but I've seen it being played on numerous occasions on YouTube and stuff. And it's such a neat idea. Uh, it's basically like a uh, bird's eye view kind of uh, cooperative cooking game where, you know, you, you have the, these orders come through and, you know, you have to basically, you know, cook things, you chop the ingredients and all stuff like that and basically get their, these dishes out as quickly as possible and the more dishes you get out um, without missing orders and stuff, the better your score. Really, really neat idea. Um, so I kind of hope that that takes it because, you know, the idea is so strong and it's from a really small studio as well. So, I mean, for it to even get uh, nominated alongside these other games like Gears of War and Battlefield is... It's a tremendous achievement, so I would cast my vote for Overcooked. Um, the only uh, games on this list I've played, I played the Battlefield 1 beta. Um, I will be picking up Battlefield 1 uh, later on in the year, hopefully. Um, and I've played Rainbow Six Siege as well. Really, you know, surprised that Rainbow Six Siege is on here. It came out in uh, December last year, so that's why it's, you know, getting uh, kind of nominated here. But... Um, for it, you know, the, the the kind of the community and the fan base surrounding Rainbow Six is absolutely huge. I mean, for a, for a multiplayer game like this to have legs for so long is really kind of an outstanding achievement. And the same can be said really for, for Overwatch when that released uh, in May from Blizzard became pretty much an overnight sensation. Um, millions and millions play that game, you know, to this day. Huge community around that spawn. It's only esports league, uh, bled into cosplay culture and stuff. It's huge, absolutely huge, thanks to the you know, colourful cast of characters and the perfected gameplay that Blizzard have pretty much mastered. Um, so, I mean, any one of these uh, games could walk home with a prize. I would vote for Overcooked, but what I think will win is Overwatch. I mean, that game is absolutely 
absolutely huge. Best strategy game we're skipping over. Best family game. Nominees are Dragon Quest Builders, uh, Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens, Pokemon Go, uh, we have Ratchet and Clank, and then Skylanders Imaginators. Um, I have played Ratchet and Clank, played Pokemon Go, and Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. Haven't played Dragon Quest Builders um, or Skylanders. In terms of what I think, in terms of what I'd vote for, um, I really enjoyed Ratchet and Clank, and that's a phenomenal game. That's in there, kind of, as one of my best games of the year, really. Such such a fantastic game. Um, Pokemon Go, I'm struggling to see kind of the family element, I guess. You know, you could take your kids around, catching all these Pokemon and stuff. That seems like the obvious winner, just because how huge Pokemon Go uh, was this year. Um, and I, it probably might win it uh, in that regard, but I, I kind of feel like the Lego games have always stood out in terms of, you know, uh, being you know, great family games. Um, they are kind of pick up and play. You know, you've got the charm and the humor of, of Lego, you know, really, you know, simplistic to, to wrap your head around and stuff. Um, I played Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens and thoroughly enjoyed it, and now I'm, you know, probably way too old to play a game like that, but, you know, then again, that's the beauty of uh, Lego games is, you know, they, they cater for the younger gamers and also kind of the more uh, older gamers as well. Um, so I'd vote for Ratchet and Clank, um, but, uh, you know, either Pokemon Go or Lego Star Wars could walk away with it. Um, Pokemon Go will probably walk away. It might, uh, I don't know, if Lego Star Wars or Pokemon Go. If I had to put money on it, Pokemon Go, just because of how huge uh, Pokemon Go was this year. So next up we have best fighting game. This is another category I can't can't really contribute to uh, in any way at all. I don't play fighting games. I absolutely suck at fighting games, but I appreciate uh, the fighting genre and the people that are absolute masters, masters and wizards uh, at fighting games. It's just an absolute uh, kind of marvel to watch these people kind of button bash and do all these combos and stuff. All power to you, but I absolutely suck at fighting games. Uh, best role playing games, and the nominees are we have Dark Souls 3, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Blood and Wine, uh, World of Warcraft Legion, and Xenoblade Chronicles X. Really strong list. Um, Dark Souls 3 gets a nod here, and surprisingly doesn't get a nod uh, in some other categories. Um, so in that regard, I think it could well take away an award there because you know people might feel like they've got to give Dark Dark Souls Three something, right? And that's not a knock and that's not a knock against Dark Souls Three. I haven't played it, but um, from what I've seen and heard, it's a it's a fantastic game. Um, Deus Ex: Mankind Divided. I played Human Revolution. Uh, intended to pick up Mankind Divided, excuse me, at some point, but uh, just haven't really got around to it. The Witcher Three. Uh, Wild Hunt, Blood and Wine. Um, I haven't played, but I recently started and jumped into The Witcher 3 and uh, absolutely fell in love with that game. Uh, I think it's it's amazing. One of the best uh, RPGs I've ever played. Uh, World of Warcraft Legion and Xenoblade Chronicles X, uh, no idea. I mean, obviously World of Warcraft is huge, um, but I kind of feel like um, I would vote for The Witcher 3, uh, Wild Hunt, Blood and Wine, but I think Dark Souls 3 will get it on the basis that it's not nominated for... Um, I don't think it's nominated at all in any other categories coming up. It might be in one more. Um, but I kind of feel like on, on that basis, you know, people will probably feel like they've got to give Dark Souls 3 something because it would be a crime not to. Best, best a action adventure game. <laughs> so the nominees for this uh, category are Dishonored 2, Hitman, uh, Hyperlight Drifter, Ratchet and & Clank, and Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. I have played Uncharted 4, Ratchet and & Clank, um, and that's about it. Uh, I intend, well I played Dishonored 2 in a Let's Play that went up uh, recently. Um, I'm going to get back to that game eventually uh, after university and stuff quiets down. Hitman, I kind of wrote off Hitman when it was first announced. I really didn't get this whole kind of episode episodic and season kind of structure they were going for so basically they were releasing kind of uh, almost in like a, um, a telltale style they were releasing kind of one uh, huge mission after the other basically and I kind of didn't you know didn't get that at all but you know thinking about it uh, in hindsight it's actually kind of an ingenious idea because you know in a way they have kind of um, built up more 
built up more of a discussion around the game. Uh, a lot of people might, like myself, might have written it off uh, immediately, but you know, as it's released throughout the year, when it's a bit more, you know, quieter and stuff, people have thought, oh, you know, maybe I'll give Hitman a try, pick it up, and then fall in love with it, uh, and then kind of, you know, it's almost like a snowball effect, and it just begins to to pick up traction and stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, it's really kind of an, an ingenious uh, way to release a game, uh, and kind of hats off to them for that. Uh, Hyperlight Drifter, I, I don't really know much about that game, to be honest with you. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, like I've said, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uncharted 4 um, is probably one of my games of the year, if not my game of the year. Um, absolutely stunning game, what a really kind of fitting end to the Uncharted series, or and certainly... Uh, Naughty Dog's uh, run with Uncharted. I dare say Sony will pick up the franchise uh, later on down the line. But you know, th to wrap up Nathan Drake's story and stuff uh, in such such a way was uh, was really quite remarkable. Uh, the game is absolutely stunning from a visual standpoint. Um, kind of the game plays better than ever. The way they kind of opened up the environments and you know gave you more kind of player agency to tackle its stealth or going guns blazing. And kind of the level design to accommodate that was really really strong and the story was kind of gripping from from start to finish the performances were were stunning and it, it didn't contain as many kind of standout action sequences um than, than previous uncharted but that's really not this one was a, not what this one was about it was about the story and the characters and really kind of having uh these relationships um, kind of tie off and stuff like that. Um, that that was really kind of the heart of the game this time around and I guess it, it's always been the heart of Uncharted but you know this one especially because it was you know bringing the story to an end and stuff um, it really kind of really really kind of hit home um, so I would give my vote to Uncharted and I think Uncharted will win best action adventure game because it talks about traversal combat and puzzle solving which Uncharted does and you know, I don't think it, any game in that list does it better than Uncharted. Next up, we have Best Action Game on its own for the best games in the action genre focused on combat. Pretty vague, uh, but let's see what the nominees are. We have Battlefield 1, Doom from id Software and Bethesda, Gears of War 4, Overwatch, and Titanfall 2. So, once again, haven't played any of the games on that list uh, kind of properly bar Doom. Uh, I bought Doom when it went on sale um, after it launched and absolutely loved that game. It's one of my games of the year this year. Um, just just a really kind of remarkable, remarkable game in terms of it's probably one of the best first person shooters I've played this year, but you know, in a long, long time period. Um, it's so fast paced and just feels so good to, pe to play. There's almost kind of a rhythm to it uh, in the sense that because it's so fast at 60 frames, you're kind of almost bouncing between enemies and you're pulling off these executions, brutal executions and gory executions that give you life and stuff. Um, so you may take damage going to the execution, but then you get life, kill people, and you're, you're just bouncing between different enemies, and there's such a fluidity um, to the combat, and, you know, the soundtrack as well is just, like, so kind of punk rock and headbanging. It's just, it's a really, really awesome, like, awesome game. Um, and what I, I'm probably what a lot of people felt when they played the original Doom uh, right, way back in the day. Um, so on that basis alone... Um, I, I would give it to Doom because in terms of uh, the game that I think does action the best, I know I haven't played um, the other games, but you know I've played Gears of Gears games in the past, so I kind of know and f know how they play and feel. I haven't played Overwatch. Um, I played the first Titanfall at a friend of mine's house, and I understand that that does kind of free running and parkour very very well uh, in, a, in a first person shooter. And I've played Battlefield One in the beta. Um, but I really think Doom should take this one home because, in terms of a, uh, in terms of the action, I mean, it's just so it's so non-stop, it's so visceral, it's so um, kind of engaging and just so so well done um, that I think it should take uh, that one away. So that's best action game. Next up, we have best VR game. This is kind of another category that I really have no. Uh, kind of nothing to chime in with uh, really but I'll kind of run through the nominees quickly Batman Arkham VR, Eve Valkyrie, Job Simulator, Res Infinite and Thumper. Um, I've kind of been following what people have said about PlayStation VR I put down a pre-order for PSVR very late 
uh, with the intent on, on buying it in December and January and stuff when they, when they you know became available and stuff because they were you know selling out uh, and things like that and they you know had, didn't have any more kind of launch uh, you know headsets and stuff I guess um, but I did get a, a text and a call a few weeks after it launched and said hey you know some people haven't you know followed through with their pre-order ones available so I thought oh great I'll pick one up and then realized that the room I'm in um, is such like so small you know, I'm literally only a few, a few feet away from my TV that it simply wouldn't work. I'd be hitting off the walls and stuff like this, you know, trying to set up the PS, you know, you're trying to use the PSVR. So I've, I had to cancel my pre-order and get my £20 back. Um, so maybe later on down the line when I have kind of a bigger uh, place, I guess, uh, I, I'll be, um, there might be a, like a new model out by that point and stuff. Uh, I'll pick up PSVR. Uh, but from what I've heard and stuff um, from people that have PSVR and have played these games, I mean... Batman Arkham VR uh, seems like the game that you would show to people that don't know what VR is, that haven't played VR before. Uh, you, you would say, look, play this, and that'll be the game you'd want to show them. Much like when the Wii came out, you know, you'd put on Wii Sports or something and say, hey, look, this is what the Wii is and does. Uh, Batman Arkham VR would be a similar sort of thing for, um, for a virtual reality headset. So... Uh, I would vote for Batman Arkham VR, and I think Batman v Arkham VR will win it. Absolutely devastated that I can't play that game. Huge Batman fan and stuff, as you guys know. So to actually be the Batman uh, in VR would just be an absolute dream come true. Jesus. So devastated I can't play that bloody game. Best mobile and handheld game. Uh, the nominee, I'm going to run through this one very quickly because I think the winner is, uh, you know, clear as day. Clash Royale, Fire Emblem Fates, Monster Hunter Generations, Pokemon Go, and Severed. Um, I played both Severed and Pokemon Go. The other games in the list I have not played. Uh, I really enjoyed Severed. I played it on the PlayStation Vita. I reviewed it. I think it was a really, you know, great uh, first-person dungeon crawler. Super sweet. Um, kind of uh, visual style and art and you know art direction uh, and kind of using the touch screen to slice off the lim limbs and stuff was really really cool but I think the clear winner here is Pokemon Go uh, just on, on the basis that you know immensely popular it was how everybody and their dog was playing Pokemon Go you know people that hadn't played a video game in their life uh, were playing games I saw people walking around you know everywhere playing this game um, and even though it might not be the best quote unquote mobile uh, handheld game of the year you know it was pretty broken uh, there wasn't a lot to the game but I just feel like it was such uh, a phenomenon that it has to it has to win right so I would vote for Pokemon Go I would, I would actually vote for Severed to be honest with you I think Severed is a better better game even though I didn't play it on mobile but it, it would be pretty much the same on mobile um, but I think Pokemon Go is the winner there. Best independent game. The nominees are Firewatch, Hyperlight Drifter, Inside, Star, Dew Valley, and uh, The Witness. I have played only uh, Firewatch on this list. I intend uh, to play Inside towards the end of the year because what I've heard from Inside is that this, it's this absolute masterpiece. Just came out of nowhere, completely took everyone um, by surprise. This is the uh, the game, uh, the next kind of game from Playdead who did Limbo, I believe. So obviously Limbo was another critical darling and people thought, um, you know, didn't really, I guess, expect them to come out with a game that was better than Limbo, but uh, Inside took everybody by surprise. It, it was a game that apparently is just so well made in terms of animation, in terms of, um, you know, everything in the world has a purpose, in terms of the, it tells a very uh, fascinating and interesting story, but has such a, an open-endedness to it in terms of you can, you can interpret it in multiple different ways. Um, it's just meant to be a really, really special game, so I do intend to get to that uh, eventually. Um, so, uh, I mean, in terms of Firewatch, I absolutely adored Firewatch. Um, I know a few people that I follow in the industry and stuff uh, didn't really kind of gel with Firewatch as much as I did, and I completely don't understand why. I think um, the art direction in that game, first of all, is, is stunning. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. It's almost like um, a, a kind of a watercolor painting, almost. Um, and I think the story itself was really engaging. The performances uh, were were kind of 
uh, mesmerizing really and they get a nice uh, later on down the line in terms of best performance in the best performance category um, I just think it was a really special game um, I really enjoyed it um, so I would give my vote to to Firewatch but I think Inside will walk away with that just because of how kind of universally loved uh, that game was and Firewatch as well was to a certain extent but I mean Inside just completely blew everybody away I mean I was I was seeing tens Across the board so moving swiftly on we have best performance which i mentioned just a while ago and the nominees are alex hernandez as lincoln clay in mafia 3 uh, sissy jones as delilah in firewatch emily rose as elena in uncharted 4 a thief's end nolan north as nathan drake in uncharted 4 rich uh, summer as henry uh, in Firewatch, and Troy Baker as Sam Drake in Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. Now it goes without saying that Emily Rose, Troy Baker and Nolan North did absolutely outstanding jobs as their respective characters in Uncharted 4. Um, like I said earlier, the kind of the heart and um, what I think everybody plays Uncharted 4 for is the story and you know these characters and their story and their relationships and once again uh, these guys did a uh, 10 out of 10 uh, job their performances are incredible so any one of them could walk away with it I think probably Nolan North has a better shot at winning uh, in the sense that people might think it's kind of a nice uh, he should win it because you know Uncharted 4 is coming to an end it's the end of Nathan Drake's story blah 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 but I would actually um, uh, before that actually Alex Hernandez as Lincoln Clay in Mafia 3 playing through that at the moment even though that game is disappointing uh, the best part about it is the story and obviously that is driven and the heart of that is uh, Alex Hernandez uh, as Lincoln Clay he does a great job I haven't played uh, through the rest of the game yet but uh, he is doing a kind of sensational job um, in it at the moment um, as I'm playing it so uh, he I mean he has a, I don't think he has a chance but that's not knocking his performance uh, at all uh, it's great but in terms of who I would give my uh, give the, the who I would vote for and who I think will walk away uh, victorious in this category is um, Sissy Jones as Delilah um, and I think Rich Rich Summer um, has an equal chance um, of winning uh, really or you know I would give I mean it's hard to t to kind of cast um, my vote um, in this one because both of them do such a fantastic job um, in terms of performance um, even though you don't see these characters um, you only hear them you know you play the game from a first person perspective that there's something about the writing this is gonna sound very cliche but there's something about the writing and the performances that make the whole thing seem so real. Um, there'll be a few instances instances in the game where there are dialogue options, and just some of the dialogue op options uh, that you have and the way um, they deliver them just makes the whole thing feel so real. Like there's nothing fantastical about it. It all feels very real, very grounded, um, and the performances are just really. I didn't, didn't expect them. I mean, they have no right being that good to be quite honest with you. Um, in, in an independent game um, which is not knocking independent games at all but you know you, you what I'm saying is you would expect performances like this to be in you know a triple a uh, blockbuster game um, so that that really took me by surprise and the performances are splendid in that game uh, but in terms of who is the better at the two it's really tough to say but I, I would give it to um, Sissy Jones as Delilah but who I think will win um, I think Nolan North will win uh, as, as Nathan Drake on the basis that you know it's the end to Uncharted and I, I don't think he's won uh, an award for best performance Nolan North I could be wrong um, he's voiced so many characters in, in his career um, but I think you know they might give him uh, the nod um, this time around best art direction the nominees are Abzu from uh, Giant Squid Firewatch Inside Overwatch, and Uncharted 4, Thief's End. Um, so in terms of what I think will walk away with the award, it's between Firewatch and Inside here. Um, like I said, I haven't played Inside, but I've seen kind of uh, the game's aesthetic and stuff from you know brief screenshots and trailers and things. Um, Firewatch, I think, is a, is an absolutely stunning game, uh, beautiful in its own right, in its own kind of art direction. Um, I would vote for Firewatch, but I think Inside will take home. Um, the prize here for best art direction 
Moving on, we have Best Narrative and the nominees are we have Firewatch from Capo Santo, Inside from Play Dead Mafia 3 from Hangar 13 and 2K, Oxen Free from Night School Studio, and Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. Uh, played Uncharted, playing through Mafia, haven't played Inside, played Firewatch. Um, Mafia 3, I really think the story is fantastic, um, but what you have to do to get to the story, the really monotonous gameplay, um, I know it shouldn't affect the story because you're judging, you know, there's just the story on its own, but I think that impacts it somewhat for me personally. I think that somewhat diminishes the story because the amount of, um, kind of shit you have to go through really, if I'm being quite honest with you, from a gameplay standpoint to get to the good bits, in, uh, which is the story, um, is just so kind of tedious and long-winded that it somewhat diminishes how fantastic the story is in Mafia 3. So in that regard, I wouldn't vote for it and I don't think it will walk away victorious. Uncharted 4 is has a fantastic story um, and like I said it rounds out um, the, the franchise and Nathan Drake's story um, superbly um, but like I said previously about Inside and how fantastic Firewatch is um, I think because Inside um, is so open to interpretation and it's such a unique um, story an idea and it completely took people by surprise and people didn't know how um, what to think about it I you know there was discussions about this game um, both kind of online in publications and in podcasts and stuff and between uh, people in the industry for for so long I feel like the narrative and stuff had such a profound impact on people that it will walk away uh, victorious here in the category I would give it give it to firewatch because I was impacted personally um, uh, very very deeply by Firewatch's story um, so I, I would give it to Firewatch but I think inside will walk away um, victorious so we have the last two categories here apologies this video has gone on for a lot longer than I expected to be honest with you but um, we have the final two categories here uh, which are best studio now um, you would expect that whatever wins game of the year the studio behind that game you would, you would think would win best studio uh, and game direction because you know they made game of the year um, basically uh, but we're going to start off with best studio and game direction regardless uh, uh, and the nominees are Blizzard for Overwatch, DICE for Battlefield 1, id Software for Doom, uh, Naughty Dog for Uncharted, Thor of, Uncharted 4 Thieves End and uh, Respawn for Titanfall 2. Really kind of solid uh, uh, and respectable uh, and extremely talented studios here in this list for you know for creating um, the, some of the year's best games. Um, obviously Naughty Dog, absolute masters of what they do. Um, id Software kind of released this critical darling in Doom really. Um, kind of Doom had a troubled uh, kind of production uh, process and a lot of people thought this game wasn't going to be very good because uh, kind of re review copies weren't being sent out, sent out until either the day before release or, or on the day and that's typically a bad sign. Uh, and you know this game was originally meant to be Doom 3. Uh, and what have you, uh, but this game came out and I think in a way took people by surprise and was just an absolutely uh, spectacular game. Uh, and obviously DICE um, took a big risk really, taking Battlefield back to World War One. Uh, there was that great article that came out uh, earlier in the year that said that you know, kind of the executives at EA uh, weren't initially behind Battlefield 1 because they didn't think a lot of people would know uh, that World War One happened or that it existed uh, that it took place, um, uh, which I found quite funny. Uh, but they did it, they took it in that direction, and in a, in a way, in a very ironic way, it was very refreshing to see uh, first person military issues that go back to that era, so um, kind of hats off to them for doing that, and apparently the single player campaign is really strong in this, which is kind of a first for Battlefield since Bad Company 2, I want to say. And obviously you have Blizzard here, which released the absolute phenomenon, global phenomenon that is Overwatch. Um, and in that sense, uh, I think we'll leave that one uh, for now, I'll move on to game of the year and list those and then we'll kind of do these two um, final categories in kind of one chunk if you will. Game of the year, recognising a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. You have Doom from id Software, Inside from Play Dead, Overwatch from Blizzard, Titanfall 2 from Respawn and Uncharted 4 Thief's End from Naughty Dog. So obviously Inside uh, is on this list but Play Dead isn't uh, recognised in the best studio and uh, kind of direction or whatever it was. And the reason I point that out and the reason why I think that's important is 
I think Insider will walk away with Game of the Year 2016. Um, like I said, I haven't played Inside, so take my opinion with a grain of salt, I guess. But I think, for the reasons I've listed, um, you know, in this video, I think Inside was such a critical darling, you know, regarded as such a special, unique, uh, and creative game. Um, uh, kind of a really, kind of stellar game from a narrative gameplay, art direction, you know, from multiple standpoints, really, that I think it's one of those kind of indie darlings that will walk away. Uh, with Game of the Year. I would personally vote for Uncharted 4. I mean, <laughs> just because really it's the only game. I mean, I've played Doom as well, but I think out of Doom and Uncharted 4, I think Uncharted 4 um, is, the, is the better game in my opinion. Um, I mean, but Blizzard has, I mean, Overwatch has equally as a stronger chance as winning Game of the Year on the basis that it's just so, so huge uh, and will be played in years and years to come. Um, but I think Inside will walk away um, with uh, Game of the Year 2016. Um, but obviously, Play Dead aren't recognised in the best um, studio. Otherwise, I would probably give um, that to Play Dead on the basis that I think Inside will win Game of the Year. So, moving back to best studio and game direction, um, I think. Um, I'm going to give it to Naughty Dog, to be honest with you. Uh, I think people may not vote for Naughty Dog because it's just kind of expected and a norm I guess that on whatever Naughty Dog produces is gold basically you know you see Naughty Dog attached to a game you instantly think that it's going to be nothing short of a masterpiece and so far it has been um, so people might not vote for Naughty Dog in that respect but I feel like if, it, if Uncharted 4 doesn't win um, game of the year then I think much like I said with Dark Souls 3 um, people will, will want to give Uncharted 4 uh, a nod in some respect, uh, in some way, and on that basis I think that they'll give it to Naughty Dog. Um, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't I don't think DICE would win, I don't think Respawn would win, um, so it's between Naughty Dog, id Software and Blizzard. Um, I think you could really rule out id Software and really it would be down to Blizzard and uh, Naughty Dog, but I think um, you know Overwatch will certainly win Best Multiplayer Game and may pick up some other awards, so on that basis I think um, they'll give it to, to Naughty Dog. Um, so there you go, I think Game of the Year 2016 will be Inside. Oh god, excuse me. Um, whether I'm right or wrong, only time will tell. Uh, the Game Awards is taking place on December 1st, Thursday, December 1st. Uh, like I said, it'll be live streamed. Um, on across multiple publications, you'll be able to find it absolutely anywhere. Um, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, I've watched these every year. Um, I think it's really cool to see games and stuff, and studios and stuff be recognised for their work. Uh, it's really cool to kind of see the exclusive gameplay reveals and stuff as well. I'll be putting up my personal um, top five games of 2016 a bit later on in the year when I've caught up with some of these games on these lists um, that I've missed. Things like Inside and you know some of the shooters and stuff as well. Because um, at the minute I've played a few games, but I certainly uh, have a a notable gap um, in the games I've played this year. So I'll you know I'll dive into those later on in the year when university has, has quieted down and stuff over the Christmas period. Um, but yeah, those have been uh, my predictions for the Game Awards 2016. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think uh, will be Game of the Year 2016 and what games you think will uh, win. Um, in these categories. Thanks for sticking around for this one. Uh, it's been somewhat long-winded. Um, I didn't want to just rattle through them, you know, and just say, oh yeah, the, uh, Uncharted's going to win this, Doom's going to win this, blah, 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 blah. You know, I obviously wanted to go into a bit more detail as to why. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And until the next one, folks, take it easy.